Welcome back to the show. Let's go to line number five. Good morning, Robert. You're on the air. Good morning, Patty. Um, first, I want to thank you very much for taking my call today. And uh, I want to say that I certainly appreciate you asking the questions to the people in power that are being raised to you. Um, today, I just want to um, discuss a little bit about the Everett proposal out here in Central. So um, it came to my attention yesterday that they have water measurement devices installed on a body of water that they claim that they weren't going to be using. So for this proposal here in the Botwood area, they've been stating from the very beginning that they will be using Peter's Pond, and historically Peter's Pond has enough water usage um, for, for industrial use that they used to have for the water supply for the town of Botwood, that they wouldn't be looking at other um, areas in order to supplement the water supply. So yesterday we found out that the Strum, Strum Environmental actually has water measurement devices installed around New Bay Lake, which and at the beginning of Mill River, which flows into Point Lemington. So this is another Salmon River that, um, due to the global warming, we'll say that the the levels are drastically low in the summer, and the salmon are having struggles to get up there in the middle of the summer, and they're just stuck in the pools and stuck in the bays certain years. So. It just shows, again, the lack of transparency and the misinformation that's being presented by these proponents, and especially Everett out here in Central. And it just goes to show that they're not being truthful, transparent, or open with what they're planning and what they're doing. So there's two different things coming out. There's there's what they're telling us and then what they're doing. And, again, if this is such a good opportunity for our province and for our area – then why is there so much secrecy and why are the people not being listened to? And the people out here who are opposed to this pre- uh, project or proposal, we don't feel like we have any representation at all with our leaders, um, regardless of the party, either liberal, conservative or NDP even. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, have we been told directly that they are going to use this other water source that you mentioned or is the fact that they've installed these water measurement tools just makes you think that absolutely they must be well obviously why would they be measuring the water in mill river and new bay lake unless they are looking at it as a secondary supply because peter's river doesn't keep up with what they're expected to use as their process demand requires no i mean i'm not denying what you're telling me i'm just wondering had they made a definitive statement that this is the now backup source does the province even know some of those things that's all i was wondering is if we even if we know who put them there well, I know that the Strum Environmental are the ones that put them there. Okay. I know that for a fact. Um, but no, the the company Everett, they refuse to answer questions. I've sent almost 100 questions to them. And, and when I ask for clarifications because of not answers, they're coming back now and saying, thank you for your comment. Your opinion is noted instead of answering my con- questions and concerns. So it's just, it's like they don't want to engage with anybody who has valid concerns or questions or uh, um, issues with the proposal, and they're just going out and presenting that they don't have any opposition. And even in their August project update that they released to the commun- municipalities, um, there's flat out lies in there. So they're saying that they have the letters of the support that were, like I mentioned before, they're outdated and invalid in my opinion, and they're stating that they have no concerns from these municipalities, which is, um, again, a lie because I put in an access to information request and I got the results back that stated that the town of Northern Arm were concerned about the placement of the turbines inside their municipal boundaries. So they're not being transparent whatsoever, and what they do issue is either misinformation or flat-out lies. You know, it's time that we follow up again with the province on these issues because we can only ask the same questions as many times as we already have, but things seem to be changing. I mean, and you say that Everett has said they were only going to use Peters River, and then, of course, World Energy GH2, and I hate to always bring that back into it, but they're the one uh, outfit that's actually been released, I guess, from the environmental assessment, and they said they need no public money, when, in fact, now they have a $128 million line of credit with the federal government, and there's going to be access to billions of dollars in tax subsidies as soon as the government gets, uh, gets around to actually defining what green means, because there's nothing pure green, it's just green earth and other options possibly so yeah i guess it's time to go back to the well and find out whether or not the province is even in the loop with some of these change of tactic and or change of water sources by in this case everett 
Oh, absolutely. And uh, again, like I've emailed questions to Minister Parsons, a long list of questions. And what you get back is just a cookie cutter response saying that they don't have permission to do anything on the land. There's no permits issued yet. But now they've got temporary permits issued from um, from Crown Lands in order to install these MET towers. So they're going into these locations and blocking access to certain areas, which is against the regulations of their permits. And the locals here are just absolutely livid. And uh, I got to say, like, I don't feel a lot of division in our communities. I only feel like there's more and more support to stop this development as soon as possible. But our leaders, and like I said, regardless of the party color, they don't seem to be listening to the people of the province or the people of the area who are going to be suffering and living with these consequences and paying for it against their, their desires. So... It's yeah. basically the definition of a banana republic that the, the government is pushing these developments through with these um, questionable proponents in order to benefit their connected inside uh, contractors. So, I mean, it's absolutely repulsive when you see what's going on in detail. And just to mention GH2 again, people that are hopeful and looking for jobs. I read a comment yesterday that somebody said, well, hopefully the unions can get a lot of work out of this. Well. World Energy, they actually had the unions sign a letter of support or issue a letter of support to IET, and then they turned around and said that, no, it's not going to be a unionized job site. So they're complete, like all of these com- companies are saying one thing and doing another just to get approval and support. And it's just, it's so disgusting when you know the details. Like, I don't know what else to do at this point. There's also this whole concept of social license. Now, whether or not that actually plays a meaningful role in decision-making at the provincial and or federal government level, I think is a fair conversation to have. But for the companies, if they think that social license is an important approach to getting final approvals and getting their projects off the ground, then when they're not forthcoming, then, of course, as you just mentioned, you know, you don't see a lot of division that maybe was in place at one point. Now there's more and more people possibly against these projects based on some of the things that are worst case scenario because you can't get any answers. It's just a really terribly calculated approach. If you want to uh, attain or achieve said social license, the one surefire way to have a crack at that is to be forthcoming with answers and straight up about, you know, whether it be water source in this case or anything else under the sun. So as they trip themselves up, it makes it more difficult for them. I don't know if it's going to change the water and the beans for the provincial government, who are seemingly very much bullish on this. And I'm not so sure we've really heard much from any politician or any political party here in this province that are completely opposed to these projects, period. Absolutely. And the concept of social license right now, um, like I said, Everett out here is stating that they have letters of support from the eight municipalities that signed on in February of 2023 with the information date at that time of 300 turbines. Well, the project now has 530 turbines, as announced with their partnership with the formerly bankrupt engineering company, McDermott Engineering. So those letters, as I said, they're outdated and invalid. Um, we're trying to get our municipality out here to hold the vote and uh, rescind their letter of support so the people can actually have a say, but they completely refuse at every opportunity and just say, well, just wait and see. So wait and see until it's too late and, and the, the damage is done. And then the taxpayers are on the hook for mediation and cleanup and, and the support for all these foreign companies with horrible histories. It's just, why, why if this is such a good project, are all these brand new companies with questionable histories coming in to uh, benefit from our subsidies federally, provincially, and uh, and dra- dangling a little carrot to our municipalities? That's basically just a slap in the face, in my opinion. I appreciate the time this morning, Robert. Thanks for the call. Thank you very much, Patty. And again, I really appreciate you guys and your platform and uh, us available to uh, speak on these topics when nobody else seems to be doing it for us. And we appreciate your time. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.